Honorable Shivambo. Now, thank you very much, uh, Speaker and Deputy President. I only acknowledge people who are here. The I don't know why Parliament engages in wasteful expenditure and, and hire Imbongi for the accompanying of the President because there's plenty of them here. One has just left this podium now. So, Kumbula President, it can easily be a poem which can be utilized to accompany the President whenever he comes for sauna debates. I want to take this opportunity to Again, congratulate the commissars and the ground forces of the EFF who have brought the ANC below 50% in the 2021 local government elections. And specifically, I'll appreciate the ground forces in Kwazulu Natal and Houting, where we have decisively dealt with the former liberation movement because it was misrepresenting our people. But if you listen to people who speak here, you will think that nothing is wrong. They are not even acknowledging the fact that they are now in their 30s in Houthi. They are going to be in their 20s very soon. The Commander-in-Chief of the EFF is in Houthi to attend to a case that was brought by a racist organization, Afri Forum, uh, to defend a song which was a battle cry to defeat the colonial and apartheid racist system in its entirety. And I'm sure that we will do that successfully. We are meeting here in the city hall because parliament was bent down due to the negligence of the state. And uh, I think we must then treat this with there is a silver lining that says that let us take this opportunity to relocate parliament to a central place to one capital city. Because the location of this parliament, we all know, is a result of a colonial pact of white men only, who, when they were trying to share power amongst themselves, they said that the four colonies must have capital cities, with Orange River Colony having the judicial capital, Transvaal administrative capital, the Cape, was still here more than 100 years later because of a colonial pact. Let us discontinue that as part of the decolonization project that we must then engage in. What this SONA debate has revealed over the past two days is that in the liberation movement, the former liberation movement, we have got a lot of opportunists, careerists, intellectually incapable and dishonest members of parliament, both old and young. We have seen a lot of people come here to blow hot air and even justify, try to contextualize things that were not said here. Of course, although it has been withdrawn, we are not going to entertain the childish accusations that were made against the Commander-in-Chief about the plot to remove a certain minister. But also, how do you as a minister come and badmouth your commissioner of police, whatever personal differences you have, and then you still expect society to have faith in the police system where in parliament, we have got a minister who, who, who openly he does that in press conferences and then he, he repeats gossip as if it's intelligence. If we were to do that as well, we're going to, to, to spread gossip here and say that there are ministers who are in cabbies to kill members of parliament who are, about to, who are about to expose them of corruption. We are not going to do it today. We'll do it once we've gathered proper facts. We're going to give a critical analysis of the State of Nation Address, which was themed around building a new consensus, which in any way the President said is not concluded. He said amongst other things that within the next 100 days, the social partners are going to finalize a comprehensive a pact, a compact, which is going to grow the economy, create jobs and combat hunger. That is what he said. And then he said something which is not true. <laughs> that he said that we all know that government does not create jobs, business creates jobs. That is conceptually and empirically false. So the correct statement should have read like this, that 
We all know that the ANC government will not and does not intend to create jobs and will depend on white businesses to create jobs. It is empirically, like, it's even from a basic logic point of view. You can't say government does not create jobs. You have got, you have got one million government employees. Those jobs were created to deliver certain services. You are trying to create lousy jobs called EPWPs. Those are jobs, so to, to, it's factually incorrect. And you come here to try to justify it. But the most shocking thing that I got to realize here is that on the 11th of February, the South African Careerist Party, the SACP, issued a statement to say that the president must withdraw an assertion that government does not create jobs. It is fatally flawed. But we had members here, yeah, Masondo, uh, Mantashe, uh, Tulas, everyone else, they, who kept, they never even repeated that in their own characterization. That is a fatal error. To say it, it's, it's fundamentally wrong to even suppose that to show that they the, 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 the even try to ascribe a developmental state and defend a developmental state to a president who never spoke about a developmental state. It's one of the things that we then have to deal with much more differently. Now let's deal with uh, some of the factual issues. One is that currently the fastest growing economy in the world is Chinese economy, the People's Republic of China. And it's, a, it's led by a communist party. It's centrally planned. The state plays a significant role in the creation of jobs and development of the productive forces. More than, more than 133 big corporations in the world, global 500, are Chinese companies, and more than 100 of those are state-owned by the Chinese People's Republic of China in terms of what gets to happen. And China has elevated poverty of more than 800 million people under capable state leadership which someone comes with a philosophical confusion here to say the state does not create job business does the attempt by the principal of the ANC school they said someone said it's a principal of an ANC school here he was trying to misascribe uh, the state which does not create job to a developmental state it's not the fact like the state that is South Africa it's a bourgeois neo-colonial neoliberal state. That is what it is. The state that is South Africa is a bourgeois neo-colonial neoliberal state. That is what it is. What we need, a developmental state is not a bourgeois state. So, so, so a, a proper characterization of a bourgeois neoliberal state is a state which Karl Marx says manages the common affairs of the whole bourgeoisie. That is the role of this state. That is why you say you admit here that you cannot create jobs, meaning that you cannot develop the productive forces. There are so many things that we can mention in terms of the progress that have been made in Singapore, that have been made in many parts of the developmental state, not bourgeois states, that were state-led and at the center of that was state leadership and guidance in terms of uh, uh, what, 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 what happens. Now, also, like this mentioning of infrastructure, this and that and that. Last week, uh, the president of the ANC was in a village in uh, Limpompo to open a pavement of a road. Whilst we always say that there must be infrastructure programs. I want to give you an example of what infrastructure programs are happening in the entire continent. In Kenya, they've just completed the 570 kilometer standard gauge railway project. In Tanzania, they're going to complete between Morogoro and, uh, and Dar es Salaam an SGR project as well, which is going to span more than 1,500 kilometers. And that is building, of course, on Tazara, which was built under Chairman Mao's guidance between 1970 and 1975, which is a railway project between Zambia and uh, Dar es Salaam. In Ethiopia, they've completed a railway project which is between uh, Addis Ababa and the, the neighboring country of Djibouti in terms of uh, what happens. 
And in addition to completion of a 50 billion US dollars city, new capital city in Egypt, they are also uh, establishing a Suez Canal special economic zone which is going to employ millions of people in terms of what happens. There are so many proper projects that are happening in the continent that are seeking to build the intercontinental infrastructure to link uh, the, the, the entire continent. It's part of what Agenda 2063 says should be the flagship programs of the African Union, of what has to be done to interconnect the entire continent with railway projects. Not pavements, not 40, meter, 40, 40 kilometer pavements, which is not even concluded in terms of what happens. Let me maybe give you a simple project which I've been failing to fulfill since uh, many years ago. So in 1994, former Minister of Defense, Joe Mudise, handed over a landing strip in the northern part of Kruger National Park to the Minga dynasty. That landing strip has got potential to be turned into a commercial opportunity, into an opportunity that can turn the northern part of Kruger National Park into a tourism hub. Osi Minga, Osi Shilungwa Minga, Wabumbiri has been pleading with the sun parks and different agencies to say that let us convert that landing strip into a proper commercial international airport and receive uh, uh, tourists there and have activities that is going to empower a lot of our people. In the same way, the strategic role is being played by the Krugan uh, National Park Mpumalanga uh, 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 Tourism Corridor. And none of those things have been done in terms of what happens. We have spoken about this. I think we have illustrated enough. It's basic logic. It's not true that the state does not create jobs. It's not true that the state does not lead development. Productive forces. In, in actual scientific terms, you must go home and study this or ask your researchers, ask everyone. There is no nation in the world in the past 40 years that has rapidly developed its productive forces without state decisive leadership. Neoliberalism has never worked. To say that you must have an invisible rayon that drives the economy and the market, it doesn't work anywhere. It is collapsing. Even the, the World Economic Forum has admitted that this invisible hand is not there. All the economies that have caught up now had clear, decisive state leadership and to want to disassociate the state from the people is not a proper philosophical, ideological system and approach. It has to be changed. And we must also say that because it's factually incorrect, these ones of the DA can repeat that it's an ideological commitment. But this one who spoke here on Thursday is a president of the republic. He's going to repeat that in front of people elsewhere. They will think all of us agree to that. So he must never ever repeat that thing anyway. Because it's factually incorrect. People are going to say that it means that the people of South Africa are, are, are not literate. How can the whole country say? Because he says, we all know. That government does not create jobs. He, must, he will go and repeat that in a, in a BRICS forum. Then they will say, this is pure madness. They will say, this is pure foolishness. That is how we're going to be characterized because these people have experienced the real hand of the state in driving development, in driving the productive forces. But all of these things will only happen once we have defeated the ANC. We're making progress now. We have to remove the ANC from power. The future does not have space for both the ANC and the EFF. And one must die. It has to be the ANC. It has to be the ANC. It has outlived its purposefulness. It doesn't know whether it's a liberation movement or what. It doesn't know what it stands for. This nonsense that the economy is going to be grown by the private sector was super, super imposed by President Mandela when he, he, he introduced gear. Unemployment was 16% in 1996. It's 34% now. As Giza, you said that let's just accelerate growth. Maybe there will be some jobs and redistribution happening. It never happened. New growth path, NDP, all of those things. What you are basically doing is to see that we have got a crisis in your family, that there is a food item which has got poison. You continue to give the food poison, people are dying. And then you think the solution is to add more and more poison. 
this neoliberal conviction, it's madness. It must come to an end. You must study properly what has led to the development of all the countries, of all the economies that got to caught up with the countries that got industrialized first. It is not neoliberalism. It is not the invisible hand of the state. It's a state that is decisive, that intervenes on the direction of the economy. It's a state that determines the form, the content, the nature, the direction of what development must take. Thank you very much. Thank you.